Thank you. It's such a privilege and honor to be here. I am so, so, so thrilled to be spending time. Firstly, sir, thank you so much for your wonderful words. There's just such inspiration and wisdom that I could feel in the years that you have had of tremendous success, of course, not just building communities and institutions, but also experiencing every single day what you do. Um, I have a, a job here today, and that is essentially to act as a mentor. I am nearly not qualified to do that, but here is how I'm going to attempt to do the same. I will split my conversation in two parts. One will be the thing that comes naturally to me, and that is the story of my life. The reason I want to share my story is not because it is my story and I'm in love with my story as much as I actually am, but the biggest thing about the story of my life is it's been such a fascinating life that I've got to live. It was not designed to be where I am right now. It has had its twists and turns, multiple quote-unquote setbacks, which upon realization I only see has shaped me meaningfully. And through that life lesson, I will leave you with what I believe has been the three components of my life that I wish everybody took in some shape and form into theirs. Not to suggest that's the only way of living life, but I firmly believe that in teen cheezon ko, अपने जहन में रखकर अगर हम अपनी जिंदगी को थोड़ा सा भी 1% एवरी डे एस सर मेंशन बदलने की कोशिश करेंगे यू विल बी शॉक्ड एंड सरप्राइज कि वो जिंदगी आपको कितनी आगे ले जा सकेगी व्हिच यू मे नॉट हैव बीन प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर टू स्टार्ट माय जर्नी आई विल टेक यू ऑल द वे बैक टू स्कूल I have uh, grown up in Delhi almost all my life. Bahut hi sadharan parivar se. My dad was a sales and marketing individual in the pharma company. My mom was a primary school teacher. And we had a very, very humble background. Nothing, frankly, outstanding. There was genuinely nothing in our family that could stamp any sort of success or for anybody to say ki is khandan mein se lag raha hai ki kuch na kuch to crack machne wala hai. Like, kahin to kuch... Bada hone wala hai. Nobody would have said that when they looked at our family. And usually what happens in such an environment is that you somehow get used to and settled to a certain life. Ki doctor, engineer, lawyer banenge, wahi same college jayenge, naukri karenge, peshes are insan banenge, and your life is in some way the day you're born set. And I don't know why, and I don't know how, but in the middle of all of that, I had a very different ambition for my life. And that ambition came very early in my life. Around the seventh or eighth standard itself, I decided that my life is going to be around three goals that I had set for myself. Goal number one, I wanted to go to the US to get a PhD degree. I was a scientist. My life was that I wanted to become a scientist. I was really good with the sciences, I was fascinated by the scientists, and I knew that the US was the best place to go, so that was goal number one for me in my life. Goal number two, I wanted to become a scientist in a specific field. I wanted to become a space scientist. And as a space scientist, there was only one place that I wanted to work at, NASA. That was it. So my goal number two was become a space scientist and get a job at NASA. That was the dream company, the Google for me in my life and so on. And that is where I wanted to be. And my third goal in life was as a space scientist working at NASA, there was only one place I finally wanted to be at. Mars. This is before Elon Musk has come into the picture. This is before uh, Shah Rukh Khan in the movie Swadesh has come back as a NASA scientist back to India ki desh mera, no pollution of Bollywood, entrepreneurship, nothing like that. 1980s, 1990s, the country is growing through so much. There is this excitement about changing your orbit. And in sari cheezon mein, these were the three goals that I was working towards. Go to the US for a PhD, become a space scientist at NASA, and then finally find yourself on Mars. And everything that I was doing, every step of my life, every thought, every action, every waking second, was towards these three goals. I took up science in class 11th and 12th, and then I joined as college, Delhi University, Hindu, where I did my bachelor's in physics. Anybody here happens to be from Delhi University by any chance? Koi bhi shocks? Nahi, dur dur tak nahi. Okay, so I can tell you what happens at Delhi University. 
Nothing happens at Delhi University. <laughs> Nothing happened. Academically, in three years, I didn't get anything. I was hoping that something will change and I learned so much. Physics, it's such a big college. It's just a number. It's just a number. I couldn't wrap my mind around. The only thing I got out of college was my wife. <laughs> But I didn't go to college looking for her. I just completely lucked out. We met each other. She fell in love with me. She had no business falling in love with me. She was totally out of my league. But I was super centered. While I was dating her and we were forming a world of what we would do together, I was super centered, focused on my three goals without any sort of distraction coming in. I started applying for the PhD programs in the US, which is where I wanted to be at and wanted to do. And through the process of all of that, I got admission at Michigan State University for its PhD program in the space sciences on a 100% scholarship, which was frankly the only way that I could have afforded that education. As I said, from a very ordinary family, there was no need so much, so much, so much, that you will go to the US and it will be on your own. So for it to happen, the only way was the 100% scholarship. And now I find myself in the US as someone who's trained in the Indian education system, which I would imagine, we all have been going through that process. And there's one thing about the Indian education system which we don't fully appreciate and recognize until we actually set foot outside this country. Ki ye jo system hai na, ye hume bhoat khubi se ek fundamental cheez se khata hai. Ki exam se kitne din pehle aapko padna shuru karna hai. Kya padna hai? Kya nahi padna hai? Last ki dus saal mein koon koon se sawal poochhe gaye the? Unko rat lena hai. एग्जाम में जाना है उन तीन घंटों में एग्जैक्टली exactly जो सवाल पूछे गए हैं उसके जवाब उल्टी कर देनी है लिखते रहना है शीटों पे शीटें आ रही हैं एंड वंस यू स्टेप आउट ऑफ दैट एग्जामिनेशन हॉल यू नो एग्जैक्टली हाउ मच यू विल स्कोर टू नो एग्जैक्टली हाउ यू विल रैंक इन द क्लास टू नो एग्जैक्टली हाउ प्राउड योर पेरेंट्स विल बी और नॉट दिस आई किड यू नॉट is a training that nobody else in this world gets except us. And I only recognized that when I went to the US because everyone around me was focused on something called learning. And I was like, no, I am focused on something called marks. Mujhe sirf number chahiye. Mujhe sirf topper banna hai. Because that is the only way that I'll get a job. And I thought NASA will just look at kaun hai topper class ka, hanji isko hai kar lo. That was the only way it works because that's the only way I had been fed it works in this system. So lo and behold, I was deploying all of the 18 years of my training in school and college to the maximum. And suddenly I was top of my class. I was on this fast track program. My professors loved me. My students hated me. Everything that I thought would be happening as per the process and expectation I'd set for myself was happening. Every single day, Every single day, there was someone or the other coming up to me and saying, my God, Ankur, you're making it. You're living your dream. You're doing exactly what you wanted to do. We are so envious of you. But I wasn't feeling the same thing. There was something that was very clearly missing. There was something that was very clearly missing. And the reason why I say this with confidence today is because we always know when something is missing. We always know when something is missing. हम आईने के सामने खड़े होके पूरी दुनिया को झूठ बोल सकते हैं, लेकिन खुद को झूठ नहीं बोल सकते. Are you doing what you were supposed to do? The answer was yes. But if I ask myself another question, are you feeling what you thought you would be feeling? The answer was no. I just wasn't feeling like this was the place for me. And I struggled with that because this is my entire identity. I had to do this in my life. This was my whole life. So I was so proud of life that this is not what I am feeling that I thought I would be. And I began having these tough conversations with myself. What is wrong? This is what you wanted to do. This is where you wanted to be. What is wrong? And I realized that physics, which is what I was doing, was something that I was good at. I was really good at, but it didn't make me happy. It didn't make me happy. And for the first time in my life, it struck me that what you're good at and what makes you happy could be two different things. And that was a shocking revelation. 
क्योंकि मुझे सिर्फ यही पढ़ाया और सिखाया गया था कि जिस चीज को करने में तुम अच्छे हो उस चीज को जब करते रहोगे ना तो तुम खुद ब खुद खुश हो जाओगे एंड दैट वाज नॉट हैपनिंग टू मी आई वाज सो गुड एट इट दैट आई कुड डू इट इन माय स्लीप बट आई वाज रोबोटिकली डूइंग इट विद नो जॉय एंड इमोशन अटैच टू इट एंड एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई हैड टू मेक अ चॉइस इन लाइफ चॉइस नंबर 1 वाज क्योंकि तुम इस चीज में करने में अच्छे हो करते रहो and you will get everything that society calls a success like wo bangla gaadi shaan chokato har ek cheez milegi because you're good at this thing but it's possible you may not be happy doing this for the rest of your life or number 2 go and chase whatever makes you happy and i didn't know what that would be but all that i knew is that if i'm not happy doing something i can never be the best at it अगर किसी चीज को करने में मैं खुश नहीं हूं उस चीज को करने में मैं कभी भी सबसे बढ़िया नहीं बन सकता इट्स जस्ट नॉट फंडामेंटली हाउ आई थॉट अबाउट माय लाइफ सो आई डिसाइडेड टू ड्रॉप आउट ऑफ माय पीएचडी प्रोग्राम एंड कम बैक टू इंडिया एंड यू कैन इमेजिन हाउ दैट कॉन्वर्सेशन वेंट विद माई पेरेंट्स दे लाइक तुम्हारा दिमाग खराब हो चुका है तुमने आठ साल से हमारा दिमाग खराब कर दिया यूएस नासा स्पेस फिजिक्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दोस थिंग्स एंड नाउ यू आर गिविंग अस दिस थ्योरी ओ आई एम गुड विद दिस बट आई एम नॉट हैप्पी वट एवर दैट मींस सो दे डेंट गेट इट एंड आफ्टर अ सीरीज ऑफ कॉन्वर्सेशन दे वर लाइक ऐसा लग रहा है कि तुम वापस आना चाहते हो विच इज फाइन बट यू डोंट हैव टू ड्रॉप आउट ऑफ योर पी एंड देन कम वाई डोंट यू फिनिश योर पी एंड देन कम बैक एंड द मिनट आई हर्ट दैट आई वॉज लाइक I have heard this before. <laughs> And then it struck me that in class 10th my parents told me is sal pad lo aur fir tumhe zindagi mein padhne ki zarurat nahi padegi. And then in class 12th my parents told me is sal acche college ghus jao tumhari puri zindagi set ho jayegi. And they telling me the same thing again ki tum kahin se apni PhD khatam kar do kuch to chamatkar ho jayega jo tumhari zindagi ko sambhal lega. and i didn't want to make hope my strategy so i did not listen to my parents came back to india at the age of 24 i have no idea what to do and aisa nahi hai ki kuch wait kar raha tha mere liye koi business nahi hai koi khandan nahi hai kuch paisa nahi hai nothing whatsoever i had to reimagine my life from scratch i was completely lost clueless confused and my friends were like uh, you are confused so why don't you do what most confused people do go get an mba kitne log hain yahan mba ke sath ha baaki log haath nahi utha rahe ab but this is the world's biggest truth slash lie people who go for an mba don't know what they want to do and that's why they go for an mba i was certainly one of them and i went to this fascinating place that i had no idea about until i got to know of it five year old school uh insanely expensive program so i'll have to take a very big loan to go there and variku khandan ka ye pehla loan hoga which is not a matter of celebration by any measure but the good thing was it's a one year program to bahut saal nahi lagenge ye samajhne mein ki ye program mere liye hai ki nahi hai and the best thing about the program was that if i did go through that program my classmates would be people with real work experience people who knew things about life because i knew nothing nothing i had no idea what sales is what marketing is what finance is what hr is what it is what supply chain is blah 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 so for me to spend time with people who had actually done this for real would be the best way for me to learn something new so i applied to this young school called isb and bhagwan bhala kare us insaan ka jisne mera application process padha and they thought that i was good to be in that school because that one year Just fundamentally changed my life. It changed everything about my life, and I think the big reason is, and I often reflect upon it, is because while I went to ISB looking for a job and a career and a company and a brand and a salary and all of those nice things that we look for, I genuinely went to ISB looking for myself. मैं कौन हूँ? मैं किस चीज़ में अच्छा हूँ? मैं किस चीज़ में अच्छा नहीं हूँ? What should I or should I not do in life? And I needed answers to those questions, which. I found at ISB and I'm going to share with all of you at the end of this. I also found out at ISB that there is this really cool profession called consulting. And consulting is very interesting. You get a lot of money. You work with a lot of smart people. You work with a lot of big businesses. 
And I thought that's a great way for me to learn. So I started applying for the consulting jobs and preparing for it and I got through a great consulting firm. And the next thing I know, I am sitting in the boardrooms of really large companies in front of people whose faces I've seen on the covers of newspapers and magazines, telling them on how they should be running their business. <laughs> Basis the Excel sheet that I have made. <laughs> This is my understanding of their business, of which I had no idea until two weeks back. And I was like, how does this make sense? Why aren't you throwing me out? I am 26 years of age. You have worked in this company for longer than I've lived on this planet. <laughs> this relationship is not equal. It's like me sitting in front of Hiran Andani sir and it's like, son, you have to do this. No, 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 do this. This Excel sheet, because I'm saying this. But they weren't complaining and I think they were just very generous at that and I wasn't complaining. One, I was learning so much every single day being a consultant trying to get to know about new industries and new business problems and that was the first time for me to get exposed to this world of business. I am having a ball of a time. Days are beat gaya, consulting karte karte and one fine evening I'm catching up with a friend of mine. Same business school, same batch. And he's like, I've started this new website and I wanted to talk to you about it. I said, sure, what's it called? And he said, it's called secondshadi.com. I was like, kya ye karta hai, jo mujhe lagta ye karta hai? <laughs> and he's like, Haan, yeah. it's a matrimonial website for remarriages. Bharat mein sari shadiyan hoti hai, so there are bound to be people who get divorced and widowed and this is a platform for them to get married again. And I was like, that is such an incredible idea. How did you think about this? He was like, no, my dad thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> so my first reaction was, I hope uncle and auntie ki shadi thik chal rahi hai. But more importantly, is there a way that I can help? And he's like, hi, I'm an engineer, I'm going to site, banana dunga, sab kuch ho jayega, but I think you and I can make a great team. Do you want to do this together? And I was like, yeah, sach bolu, Vivek to, zindagi mein pehli baar kuch sikhne ke liye mil raha hai. Zindagi mein pehli baar paise kama raha ho. Bohut, bohut maza a raha hai. So I don't think this will be the right time for me to quit my job and join you. But you know what, this is so interesting, so exciting. The internet was booming at that time in this country. This is 2007 I'm talking about. So I don't want to say no to this opportunity. If you agree, and I really hope you agree, whatever time is left out of consulting, I would want to spend it with you and just see where it goes. And he was very gracious about it. He like, sure, we don't load it. Let's start. So for the next one and a half years, I had a day job as a consultant. During night time, I was Batman trying to get people married again. And it actually worked. Second Shadi became a thing of its own. It got reasonable success, scale, and it now warranted my full-time attention. So at that point of time, I decided to quit consulting, take a 80% pay cut down to the bare minimum amount I needed to survive in life and joined secondshadi.com. And you can imagine how that conversation went with my parents. They're like, Tumara such me dimaag kharaab ho chuka hai. Why do you every four or five years keep inflicting this pain? Forget on yourself. Why do you keep inflicting it on us? Tumari khud ki pehli shadi nahi hoi hai. Tumhe koi idea nahi hota hai ki shadi kya hoti hai. Tum ab apni consulting ki naukri chhod kar ye paisa, rudba, shan, logo ki dousri shadiya karwane ja rahe ho. How does this make sense? And I was like, Maa Baba, I think that if for whatever reason this work has not done, I can always go back to consulting. I'm living on a high, people like me, I like my work, I'm good at it. So I think that I will go back to a fight in the market. But I don't know that this opportunity will come in my life or not come in my life. And I don't want to say no to that. I don't want to live with regret. So again, I did not listen to my parents. They're lovely people, by the way. They just tend to make very emotional decisions, which again is a factor for all parents, of course. They're lovely people, by the way. They just tend to make very emotional decisions, which again is a factor for all parents, so I would not disagree with that. And join secondshadi.com. And it was a wonderful journey. It was my first experience of being an entrepreneur, a founder, setting up a business, thinking about all the problems that all of you have to think about on a daily basis. And we built several other websites. The big one of that became Gadi.com. Gadi.com very quickly became one of India's largest car classified websites and used cars, new cars, whatnot. And we got an opportunity to sell Gadi.com 
after a year and a half of its existence to a really large company, make a little bit of happy money. And there were three founders. The three of us then decided to go our separate ways. And I was looking for the next thing to do as whatever my destiny held for me. And I came across this young company called Groupon. And Groupon had just started in the US, in Chicago, in 2008. It was growing like crazy all across the world, the poster child of the tech industry at that point of time. And they were looking for people to start separate country offices, India being one of the countries. So they got in touch with me. I liked them. They liked me. And the next thing I know, in 2011, I started the Groupon India business for Groupon. Did that for four years. And then in 2015, it was time for the four to five year itch to return back in life. Four five years ago, the mother's life was happy, happy, happy. They didn't get any advice. So it was time for me to come back. And I realized that if I become an executive of Groupon India, ban ke jaunga, I will not be able to capitalize what this country has in terms of its potential because their attention was focused on US and Europe, which were the two largest markets for them. But I was living this India opportunity every single day. And I wanted to do something about it. So I went to Groupon and quite crazily said, I want to buy the Groupon India business from you. And I want to make it into an independent entity. And they're like, what are you talking about? You are 100% subsidiary of a publicly listed company listed in the US. These are all things that are not like, well, they can Here is how I think we can make it happen. And it took about nine months of convincing. We partnered with Sequoia Capital, which is one of the world's best known venture capital firms. And we bought the Groupon India business from Groupon, made that into an independent entity that became nearby.com. And it very quickly became India's largest local commerce player. So if you have anything from a local perspective, whether restaurants, spa, salons, movie halls, shopping malls, and so on, we listed them online, made them accessible and searchable for consumers on a location basis, and got them to discover these businesses. And in 2017, Paytm came along. They made an investment in nearby. We became a Paytm company. And then in 2019, period. We became profitable for the first time. We were a 600 crore company at that point of time. We were profitable, making money every single month of our existence. And I thought that just then we profitable, ho jayenge na, I will feel like arrived. I'll feel like this is the startup that we all started together. Ab wo apne khud ke pair pe khada ho sakta hai. Kisi ki zarurat nahi hai. And I would be so excited to take it to the next level. But I felt exactly the opposite. I felt like my time is over. It company be a future of this company, but I don't need to stay in this company because I didn't think that materially the company's outcome will change if I am in it or not in it. And in 2019, at the end of it, I decided to step down as the CEO of my own startup take a three-month break to figure out what I wanted to do. I had a brilliant team that could take on the mandate from me. I had a brilliant culture built in that I knew could withstand every possible thing that hit. And in those three months, I thought, I'll figure what I could do. And in those three months, March 2020 happened. In March 2020, the whole world was Nobody knew what's happening. Everybody of us was locked up. The world was going through such an experience that we hadn't seen for really long, particularly not in our generation. And every single individual, forget businesses, forget industries, every single one of us had to rethink our life. How are we going to lead this? How are we going to play a part in this? How is this going to affect us or not? And I was exactly in that same space. I almost had to start all over again at the age of 40, with everything that I had done, but it almost felt like nothing would help me take this forward because I had to start all over again. And I did. And I'm here today. And I'm not here today because I'm the smartest person you'll ever meet or the most hardworking person you'll ever meet. None of that. Nothing is special in me that sets me apart. But there are a few things upon reflection that I feel have helped me, which is what I wanted to share with all of you. Because that then sets things in context. Number one, all of you belong to the real estate industry, the fraternity which provides people 
places to stay, places to work, places to communicate, collaborate, and you are responsible for all of these institutions and, of course, buildings that support those institutions to build. But all of you are from the same fraternity. Go back to a time when you were not part of a homogeneous setup. In fact, go back to the first day of college. Or go back, if any one of you have ever worked in a company, go back to the first day when you joined a company. And you were surrounded by people from all walks of life. People who looked different from you, dressed differently from you, spoke differently from you, came from very different backgrounds, very different experiences, had very different upbringing, very different worldview, very different perspective on the exact same thing. And when you're surrounded by such diverse people, the first thing that you do is to look for people who are like you. He is our fitrat. We in a very hall and we find those people who we can associate with them. Whether they are in conduct, in industry, in the city, it seems that we can contact them with them, conversation kar sakte hain. But inherently, the human tendency is to look for people who are like you. And I saw that. I remember my first week at ISB, 330 people from across the world and within a week people had formed these groups engineers with engineers chemical with chemical mechanical with mechanical lawyers with lawyers CAs with CAs Delhi with Delhi Malvia Nagar with Malvia Nagar Bombay with Bombay South Bombay with South Bombay like sub up my group bana ke bethe and they're like vibing together hanging out together high-fiving together kyunki unhe lagta tha ki is group mein Jo hamari ideology hai, hamari way of thinking hai, hamara world view hai, that will be respected and acknowledged. And I thought, isn't this the exact opposite of what one should be doing? The kisi ne mehnat karke, ek single unit mein, 330 logo ko ikhatta kiya hai, and you're still going to hang out with the three people who are like you. Because when you hang out with people who are like you, you do not learn anything new. You often find yourself nodding as against thinking or being challenged. The first step towards broadening your horizon, something that Sir referred to and adhered to, is to actually spend time with people who are nothing like you. Nothing like you. And as much as I love this fraternity, and I would love for all of you to get together as often as you can, please do yourself a favor and step out of this as much as you can. Because this is a fraternity that will support you, will your point of view, will endorse you, will maybe you challenge you, but it will also contain you. It will also limit you. It will also feel the same way that you felt for all these years because they are speaking the same language and everybody is echoing the same sentiment. Step out. Go into places that you've never been to. Like, I love the fact that Sir spends time with students. I don't know how many of you do that. And don't do that because kisi college ne mujhe bula liya, to main chala gaya. Do it as a discipline. It's something that you make part of your routine. I want to, as a discipline, spend time with people who are nothing like me because that then challenges me. It tells me of something that I cannot possibly gain on my own. Here's a simple example of that. How many of you here are parents? Quite a few of you. How many of you are parents of uh, kids above 12? Yeah, so, and wearing ages. Every that's okay. Don't worry. Go back. Every family in this country has a chief technology officer. Every family in this country has a chief, chief technology officer. Who is it? The teenager in the family. Teenager in the family is the CTO of the family. Vahi aapko new tech ke baare mein batayenge. Vahi dada dadi nana nani ko WhatsApp use karna sikhayenge. Vahi maabaap ka Instagram account banwayenge aur ensure karenge ki wu kabhi bhi unke account ko follow na karen. 
वो उनको बोलते रहेंगे कि फेसबुक इज द कूल प्लेस टू हैंग आउट वही इमोटिकॉन्स यूज करना सिखाएंगे वही बताएंगे कि रिमोट के सारे बटन क्या क्या करते हैं वही बताएंगे कि नई गाड़ी में जो 10 करोड़ बटन आजकल होते हैं उनमें से कौन कौन सा बटन जरूरी है और कौन सा नहीं है दे आर बेसिकली दन दैट विल लीड द इंटायर टेक्नोलॉजी एडॉप्शन बट देर इज वन थिंग दैट आई ऑफन हियर पर्टिकुलरली इन दिस एज ग्रुप बिकॉज दिस इज सम द सेम जनरेशन आउट देर कि ये आजकल की जनरेशन जो है ना पेशेंट नहीं है बड़ी जल्दी मची हुई है रातों रात अमीर भी बनना है सब कुछ फिगर आउट भी करना है वेट करना जानते ही नहीं है समझते ही नहीं है कि वेट करना कितना जरूरी है एंड इट्स लार्जली बिकॉज वी हैव एंड स्टॉप टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ द वर्ल्ड दैट वी वर रेज इन एंड द वर्ल्ड दैट दे आर रेज इन इज डिफरेंट सो लेट मी जस्ट ब्रीफली एक्सप्लेन दैट वी कम फ्रॉम एन एरा where we had no choice but to wait in line for almost everything we did you remember that time we had to wait to get a phone connection wait to get a hmt watch wait to get a scooter wait in line for our favorite hindi songs chitrahar yaad hai logo how many of you remember chitrahar some of you others that's totally okay you're still old uh <laughs> to explain what chitrahar is imagine that you open up youtube to watch a video and if in the event you are unable to watch the video the only next time you can watch the video is next week there is no on demand agar aap apni favorite movie ka favorite gana sunna chahte hain to na aap usko request kar sakte hain you can just hope ki aapki favorite movie ka favorite gana chal jayega and agar भगवान ना करे वो वेंसडे का स्लॉट मिस हो गया तो वो अगले वेनेसडे ही आएगा और अगले वेनेसडे जब बिजली चली जाएगी जो कि बॉम्बे में नहीं होता है लेकिन दिल्ली नामक एक शहर में अक्सर होता था तो आप उस हफ्ते को भी मिस कर देंगे एंड यू हैड नो चॉइस बट टू वेट आई रिमेंबर वेटिंग इन लाइन फॉर टू थ्री फोर आवर्स टू गेट अ मंथली बस पास वर्थ ट्वेल्व रुपीज एट यूज टू गिव मी अनलिमिटेड फ्री राइड ऑन डी टी सी विच इज दिलेंट ऑफ बेस्ट इन बॉम्बे We all have waited. हमें पसंद नहीं था वो बाय द वे ऐसा नहीं था कि अरे हम तो बुद्धा हैं और हम तो पेशेंटली ही मौन हुए हैं और पेशेंस हमारा वर्च्यू है ना वी वर फोर्स्ट इन टू दैट बट बिकॉज वी वर ऑल्सो फोर्स्ट इन टू इट एंड दैट वॉज द लाइफ दैट वी लिव वी अंडरस्टैंड टूडे वॉट इट इज टू वेट देर इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अस दैट इज स्टिल टाइट टू दैट ग्रोइंग अप इयर्स वे वी रेकग्नाइज वॉट इट इज टू वेट but today's generation how many of you here are below 30 below 30 yeah quite a few so you like me how old are you 17 you will totally get what i'm saying others you still old <laughs> he is born into a world what's your name dude ishan 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 is born into a world where for no fault of his everything is on demand everything is on demand you need a book click you need a movie click you need a cab click you need food click you need love swipe right everything he says <laughs> what are you talking about what are you talking about <laughs> everything that you need speed of thought delivered to you at your doorstep for no fault of theirs an entire generation is being raised who do not understand what it is to wait it is not part of their process it is not part of their life and as parents we certainly don't make it any easier because we certainly want to give them everything that they want on demand now when you see this you like why don't they get it you will have most of the gen z's working in your organizations and you're like why do they keep shifting jobs every 6 months i speak to so many kids age 22 and they like job mein maza nahi aa raha like kyun maza nahi aa raha i'm not creating impact like kitna time hua hai tere ko 6 mahine matlab kon bola tha ko ki 6 mahine mein impact create karna hai yahan log 60 saal se lage hue hain वो रोज आईने के सामने खड़े होकर क्वेश्चन करते हैं यार मैंने कुछ किया कि नहीं किया जिंदगी में तो मैं छह महीने के अंदर इंपैक्ट किसने बोला क्रिएट करने के लिए इट्स बिकॉज दे 
feel there is no other way of living. If I could get everything on demand until now, why can't I create impact on demand? Why can't I convince or impress my boss at will? And that's the difference. Spend time with people who are nothing like you. Because that's the only way when you open up your ears, your eyes, and shut your mouth towards a whole new world that could be different from you. That's step number one. Step number two. How many of you here have worked in a corporate setup, if at all? Yeah, okay, quite a few of you have. And everyone's heard of Google? Google is usually known as one of the best places to work at. Brilliant infrastructure, great company, fancy offices, all of that. And one thing about the Google office particularly stands out, it is their free lunch. Has anyone been to a Google office? I'm imagining some of you would have. The free lunch is the thing in a Google office. Let me explain it to you. Imagine a hall which is five times as big as this, and boundary wall pe, just like here, huh? stalls lage hua. South Indian food counter, North Indian food counter, Italian food counter, continental food counter, healthy food counter, juice food counter, dessert food counter, like politicians wedding into three. Pay khana and free. So I remember one day I was meeting a friend of mine at the Google Gurgaon office, having lunch with him. And I was standing in line of the Indian food counter. And in front of me is a Googler. Well, they call it a fancy thing, but that's what it is. And he steps outside of the line to check what the menu of the day is. He reads the menu of the day. He uses a word that I don't want to use. But he says, F man, aaj phir se dal makhani hai. And I stood there, stunned, thinking ki is insaan ne zindagi mein aisa kya ukhaad liya hai? Ki wo is baat se itna dukhi hai, ki usko zindagi mein do din consecutively dal makhani khane ko mil rahi hai. Like, kuch to kahi fat gaya hai. This is not how it was supposed to be. This is possibly not how one could have imagined this to be. So I came up with a completely bullshit theory, which I think is true. Here is a theory. When Larry Page and Sergey Brin, who are the two founders of Google, started Google, they said, we're going to create what will be the world's biggest known social experiment. Here is how it will work. We will get the smartest people in this world and give them the most complex problems to work on. But we'll also give them things they didn't expect. We'll give them free food. We'll tell them, Jab bhi aana hai aao, jab bhi jana hai jao. Office mein sona hai, so jao. Kutte billi laana hai, le aao. Tota mene laana hai, unko bhi le aao. Hum pankhe hi ata denge, koi nahi marega. Sab, ek dam protected. Aapko jo pehenna hai, pehno. Aapko 20% kisi aur cheez pe kaam karna hai, karo. Aapko bhoat saare paise chahiye, lo. Aapko international travel karna hai, wo bhi lo. Business class chala hai, wo bhi mil jayega. Hotels mein rehna hai, wo bhi milega. And their theory was that over time, these people will get addicted. They will get addicted. They will get up every morning, stand in front of the mirror and say, I deserve this. I deserve this in life. I deserve this in life. जो हर एक चीज गूगल मेरे लिए कर रहा है वो ऑफ कोर्स उसको करना है क्योंकि मैंने जिंदगी में बहुत मेहनत से इस मकाम पे पहुंच के ये सारी चीजों को कमांड किया है बट द टू फाउंडर्स वर आल्सो स्टैटिस्टिशियंस दे लाइक यार इसकी क्या पॉसिबिलिटी कि हर एक इंसान ऐसे सोचेगा इट हैज टू बी नॉन जीरो कुछ परसेंटेज जो होगा चाहे जितना भी छोटा हो हु विल नॉट फील द सेम वे सो लेट्स ऑप्टिमाइज फॉर दैट इफ वी बिल्ड अ लार्ज इनफ कंपनी there will be a small percentage, let's say 1%, who will get up every morning, face the mirror, and actually say, is this really happening? Is this truly happening? They will pinch themselves. They're like, why does Google do all these things for me? 
Why do I get all of this? What have I done to get to this point? I am just lucky. I am lucky that I was born in a family that took care of me, that gave me food, shelter and upbringing, love, education, values, because of which I sit on opportunities that I take for granted. Itne sare karono log hain is dunya mein who work just as hard as me, if not more, are just as smart as me, if not more. Unko zindagi mein ye ek second ke liye bhi nahi milega, jo mein behti ganga mein roze experience karta hoon. They are the ones who will move the company forward. They are the ones who are not entitled. Entitlement is a trap. And most of you, I don't know any one of you personally, will be the most prone to this trap. Because as next gen, you had a gen that did things for you, set it up for you, worked hard to get you to this point where for absolutely no doubt in your mind, you were given things on a platter. There was a setup that was built out in industry and organization, respect, repute, all of this was served on a platter. And the easiest thing to fall into the trap of is I deserve this. I have worked hard to get to this point. But the truth is, none of us deserve to be where we are. And I say this with absolute respect because we have some stalwarts in the room. None of us deserve to be where we are. We just got lucky. We got lucky because we were born with a certain genetic code and into a certain environment that was not our choice and that shaped up so much of our thinking, our upbringing, the opportunities we sat on that the ones who begin to lose are the ones who begin to get entitled. The minute you get entitled, game over. Game over. And referring back to what Dr. Hiranandani said, how is it, how is it that you have such large organizations, stalwarts, with all the capital in the world, all the horsepower in the world, all the experience in the world, and yet there'll be some random startup or a new gen company that will come in and disrupt that. How does that happen? It only happens because at some point of time, the company is like, hum khuda hai, hume koi nahi la sakta, hume utna nahi sochna jitne baki logo ko sochna hai, hum sirf apne wave pe travel karenge. That's the same thing that happened to Nokia. That's the same thing that will continue to happen to so many businesses that we are all aware of. And you don't want to be in the same spot. Don't get entitled. Which brings me to the third and last point before I close. And I know that I have taken a lot more time than I should have. Everything in the world, everything in the world today is designed for one thing and one thing alone. Your comfort. Everything is designed for your comfort. Like you come to this beautiful place, this lovely cocoon of a symbiotic experience, and this is an oasis in the desert that is Mumbai, and you feel like, oh my God, I've arrived. This is comfort. Everything that is around you is comfort. So it tricks you into believing that the purpose of life is to make life comfortable. It tricks you into believing that the purpose of life is to make life comfortable, when, ironically, the ones that you look up to, that you would want to be, that you inspire, are on a daily basis picking up the path of maximum resistance. They are consciously picking up something that they know has a high degree of failure rate, and yet they would sign up for those odds because if they won, game badal jayegi. Zindagi badal jayegi. And they are willing to play those odds. Don't get comfortable. It takes courage to have a certain standing and yet be willing to be vulnerable and act like a student. And I love the point that Sir made, which is if you can give yourself a gift, and frankly the only gift that you'll ever need in life is to remain a student for your entire life. Remain a student your entire life. Don't ever think of yourself as a master. Don't ever think of yourself as a teacher. Think of yourself as a student because if you know what it is to learn, nobody can beat you. Can you imagine? There is no dearth of access. And the only dearth is intent to learn. That's it. Puri dunia ka knowledge aapke hai. 
इस छोटे से डिवाइस पे जो कुछ हजार रुपए का है या शायद कुछ लाखों का डिपेंडिंग ऑन वॉट इट इज एंड दैट इज इट इट्स द सेम डिवाइस दैट इवन द रिचेस्ट पर्सन ऑन अर्थ हैज इट्स द सेम डिवाइस दैट द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल पीपल हैव यू हैव द एग्जैक्ट सेम एक्सेस एज देम द ओनली डिफरेंस इज इंटेंट एंड इफ यू वर टू ब्रिंग दैट एंड नॉट गेट कंफर्टेबल दैट्स इट सो दीज थ्री थिंग्स वेन यू कंबाइन your willingness and your discipline to spend time with others you do that in a way that you never feel entitled and you do it in a manner that you're constantly challenging yourself playing the odds of you failing more often than succeeding and yet doing that because you know that that success is going to change your orbit you have a potent mix a mix that nobody can ever defeat because that mix lies in here wo aapke haathon mein nahi hai aapke taangon mein nahi hai aapke dil mein nahi hai wo aapke dimag mein hai and if you know how to master this piece between your ears that's it that's all that you need to win in life i'll stop here i'll love for you to reflect thank you again for having me